Guys, we're back for match two. It look, we've got a pretty good hand. A little bit light on lands, but we have a couple cantrips to help with that. If we're playing against a deck that's soft empty the warrants, we might try to make some goblins early rather than going for the full combo, but we'll see what we run into. Our opponent's taking quite a bit of time to mulligan, but honestly, I think a lot more games are won and lost through poor mulligan decisions than most people realize, so I can't fault the guy for taking a few minutes to decide. Okay, looks like um, real Tron. If it was a little Tron, it probably wouldn't play the sphere. Hit bottom top. Empty of the Warrens isn't that good against normal Tron due to the presence of both Ugin and Oblivion Stone. So we're going to probably go for the full combo using um, Baral then looking for a gift send given with Merchant Scroll. We'll try to hold up mana for remand if you get the second Tron piece here. Ideally, he won't be able to cast Karn until turn 4, and on turn 3 we can hold up remand with Brawl to bounce whatever the heck he decides to do. The fact they didn't play a turn 1 map though does increase our odds quite a bit of not getting hit on turn 3 by Karn Liberated. Grabbed an Oblivion soon. I think we have to just jam Burrell. I don't think um, we're going to win this game if we just hold, sit, sit around holding up Reman Meta. Oh, looks like he's got natural Tron. Hopefully he doesn't have um I think we can only tap one mana this turn because we want to hold up Remand if he blows up the Oblivion Stone. The question is if we Merchant Scroll for a Remand or a Gifts Ungiven or just Sleight of Hand. Kind of like getting a Gifts Ungiven a little bit better. I think that's a mistake. I think you should get rid of the Burrell rather than waiting on it. Oh, it looks like a Karn. I mean an Ulamog. Let's see what he targets. Okay. Okay, we're going to need that land. We're going to need the gifts. I think we're going to get rid of a sleight of hand. This actually opens up a window to win because we'll be able to manamorphose and cast gifts and given if we get another ritual. That's not what 
we were looking for. Hey! Still in pretty bad shape here, but ha! He conceded. Well, kind of just shows he doesn't know the deck very well. Because if he would have given us Mana Morphos and Path and Flames, we couldn't really go off. All we could do is shoot him for a few. Oh, I'll take the free win. Okay, against Tron. The most important card is Shattering Spree. As usual, we take out three mans on the drop. I don't mind leaving in the Empty of the Warrens because some percentage of the time they add in more interaction, and I think they cut Ugin sometimes, and otherwise, a whole bunch of goblins is hard for them to beat. There's also a risk of Grape Shot getting exiled by a Relic, by a Thought Not Seer, or something like that. So I'm pretty happy with these cards, but I think I'd also like a single the gate as a hard answer to a removal spell, hate pieces, or just a Tron, or something like that. A Karn, or something like that. Um, Blood Moon's much better against Tron on the play rather than the draw. I think the card we'll cut for our negate's going to be a sleight of hand. Okay, this hand looks pretty sweet, but we gotta throw it back, unfortunately. The second and third gifts are pretty dead, and it's not a good five card hand. Much better. I think we'll put that on top to set up our next few draws. I'm not going to waste a Shattering Spree on a start, but if he played a map, I would have considered Shattering it. Okay, those aren't lands, so we're going to put them on the bottom. Um, there's some value in putting Sleight of Hand on top, because that looks let us look too deep for a land rather than one deep. I think we got to put this on top, just to be safe. If we don't hit our second land drop, we're just going to lose. The fact that he made black mana th makes me think he's probably on black green Tron and, and might have a collective brutality in hand. Yeah. On the bright side, he's at least two turns away from. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. He's at least two turns away from getting um, Tron online. And a turn four. Ooh, ooh, um, a turn 4 card is much easier to deal with than a turn 3 card. He should probably take her gifts and given unless he's relying on some artifacts to slow us down. Okay, there's our second land. Against green black Tron, you always run out the Brawl because their only removal could might be um, Collective Brutality, which doesn't hit Brawl, of course. I 
think we gotta just kill the map. We're gonna feel foolish if he casts a Graft Acres Cage this turn, but we'll see. A good chance he can assume he wouldn't be able to play Brawl and Shattering Spree on the same turn. Ah, natural Tron again. Bummer. That's a curious choice. Uh, in this case, where we really need to draw into some action, the second Manamorphose is better than a... Pyretic Ritual. We're gonna just shoot Ugin here because we can't afford to have the grape shot exiled from our hand. Sorry, the Karn. We're 99% uh, gonna lose this match though. So. Yeah, we're gonna concede. I can't think of any combination of cards that gets us out of this. Okay, given he's on green black Tron, and it looks like he's more warping whale based hate than artifacts. We, I'd consider putting in Dispel, and I do think I'll bring in a Blood Moon. And I think I'll cut the Empty the Warren for the Blood Moon here. I think I'll end this back. We have to watch out for Warping Whale being held to counter our Path in the Flames. Oh, this hand's great. We're definitely keeping. Okay, put a card in top. And I liked when I'm Playing with Blood Moon, I try to not get a basic on the first turn because ideally our opponent will forget that Blood Moon's a real thing they have to watch out for. The decision this turn is whether we play Brawl or wait till next turn and we can play Brawl with the negate in play. I think it's worth the risk of playing Brawl because we have a lot of interaction and ways to deal with this stuff if he takes a turn off to kill it. I'm going to get an island here though.
Bet it's still been scrying. Oh, working well. I think we're just going to pass our turn here on the off chance he plays some sort of hate card we can't deal with, like a Graft Digger's Cage. There isn't anything we have to merge and scroll for in particular because we already have a Negate and a Gifts and Given. So he does have another Warping Whale we have to play around. I think we got his blow up the map here. If we um, give some given on his turn, we really might just... Well, let's see. We go to his turn, he taps two cards to map, guarantees himself Tron, passes the five mana open, we give them given. Hmm. I think ideally he would tap out and then we cast gifts and given and go for the win on the next turn. I think we're just gonna get rid of expedition map just to be safe. we can keep him off Tron for a couple turns, that'd be very helpful. Probably give us the time we need to win. Okay. So if he plays an, a Karn, the real question is if we try to combo or just counter it. We're kind of in a tough place because we don't really have any um, rituals, so we really can't combo off after gifts and given.
Imagine our opponent's trying to decide whether he wants to tap out for a threat. And if he does and if he taps, or if he wants to just hold up the warping whale plus whatever other interaction he may have. Or he might just have a hand without any threats, so. I think the best thing that could happen here is if he taps out to cast a world breaker, because that's we really don't care about that card. We could just cast gifts. Well, we do have a Shattering Spree we can use next turn, so that's nice. I think we're going to do a Value Gift here. I think we're going to go for an Electromancer, because it can't die to Warping Whale. And some mana. We can do as much as possible next turn. I don't mind if two um, Rituals get exiled. That's good. Okay, I think we'll uh, Shattering Spree for two. And do the Warping Whale's ability to counter Shattering Spree. We're going to fire both at the Relic. opponent is down to two cards in hand and one's a warping whale, so we'll have a pretty good idea of what he's up to. The worst thing that could happen to us this turn is casting Ulamog and exiling our red sources. He's got Warping Whale and three other cards. Looks like an Ugin to me. Though interestingly, if he casts Ugin, we'll probably let it resolve. Oh, current.
I think we'll let the Sanctum resolve and look what he's going for. It, it has to be Ulamog, though, I think. Yeah. So, if we don't negate this, he's going to exile a land. Yeah, we gotta stop this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if he casts Ulamog, he's going to tap out. And if he casts Ulamog, that lets us cast Gifts and Give and then try to combo next turn. I think we got to do that because if we. Um, if we just blindly um, try to go off, he'll simply counter your past and flames, then we really can't win. Plays another Tron piece for Bone though, because then he can. <laughs> um, he'll be able to hold up Warping Whale and also cast Ugin. I mean, sorry, Ulamog. Looks like he wants land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if he only gets a two mana land, that doesn't really help him because he won't be able to cast um, Ulamog and hold up Warping Whale, anyways. A tower would be the best thing he could get here. Or a Karn, I suppose, because he could cast Karn and have. Oh, there's a Karn. I don't really mind this though because <sighs> that's fine, we'll get rid of Merchant's Roll. really want here is as much mana as possible. I wonder if by putting Blood Moon into the pile we're going to force him to pitch it, giving us more cards we want. Knowing his Warping Whale, though, I wonder what it would look like if we did Electromancer, Brawl, Blood Moon, Desperate Ritual. If he gives us either creature, we'll be able to generate sufficient mana to kind of just go off. But the problem we have here is we're not going to have much blue to spare. Well, I think we'll have enough either way to recap. So what if he gives us a Desperate Ritual and a Blood Moon? We start casting Rituals, we go up to a total of 5, 
6, 7, 8, 9 mana, Blood Moon, Past in Flames, and then we don't got a whole lot of much. We don't have much going on at that point. Another option is to not take Brawl or Electromancer and just try to draw into them. So we could go Blood Moon, Desperate, Manamorphose, and just Grape Shot. Now I think Goblins threaten him a little bit better, but we cut the Goblins, so never mind. That combo right there doesn't give us the most mana, and he'll just counter past the flames, then we'll just lose. Well, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You know what? I like the first one better. We'll add Brawl. We'll add Electromancer. I think the Blood Moon's a little too weak, so we're just going to add Metamorphose. Gives us those two. Yeah, I think we'll do that. He has us in a pretty good position here, though, so. If he gives us both creatures, though, we'll be able to generate enough mana to cast past in the flames, then simply flash it back. If he gives us Desperate Ritual and Mana Morphos, things are a little bit trickier. Then we're just going to have to get lucky with our draws, I think. Gives us Baral and Ritual, that's a mistake, so we'll cast Baral and then cast all our rituals in response if he tries to warping whale our Baral. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. than good or something like that. That's just fine. Yeah, I think we win here. I think our opponent made the correct choice of what he put in the graveyard, but we got lucky and that's going to be enough. At this point it's very hard for us to lose because even if he does have a surgical or something we can simply use the negate that is flashback.
Yeah, our opponent's a little bit salty, and I don't really blame him, but... Just how she goes. One zero, friend. Okay, grape shot, paths in the flames, desperate ritual, metamorphosis. Okay. That looks like he wants us to concede for tickets, but that's not how I roll. We're going for those five O trophies. What our odds of drawing Brawl were? So two in the graveyard, one here, five remaining out of 25 cards, so we had a 20% chance. Yeah, we, we got a little lucky, but over three draws, we did have a relatively high chance of getting an Electromancer or Brawl. Anyways, GG's.